six world champions, seven different winners in the first seven races, a winner no one expected and possibly the most thrilling F1 Grand Prix season of all time, the 2012 season gave us some of the most awe-inspiring, jaw-dropping moments the sport has ever seen. This season was a spectacle to behold, so buckle up and put your racing helmets on as I recount the greatest F1 season of all time to you, one race at a time. It all started down under in Australia, where McLaren, despite their lacklustre 2011 season, burst out of the gates like a kangaroo on steroids. Jensen Button snatched his third Australian Grand Prix victory, leaving defending champ Sebastian Vettel hot on his heels just three seconds behind. Meanwhile, teammate Lewis Hamilton, who kicked off from pole position, managed to secure a respectable third place. McLaren was back with a bang, causing everyone to scratch their heads in disbelief. Not many had expected McLaren to be this explosive out of the races, even fewer had expected Jensen to be the one leading this charge. But things would take a twist in Malaysia. As the rain poured down, McLaren's hopes washed away with a less than stellar pit stop that left Hamilton in a sticky situation. However, the master of wet conditions, Fernando Alonso, wove his magic in what many considered a sluggish Ferrari, stealing the victory right from under McLaren's nose. This led many to ask the question, was McLaren only good under scorching heat, or did they have more tricks up their sleeves? After that, we go to China, where Nico Rosberg brought the thunder for Mercedes, snatching their first win since their return to F1. McLaren, on the other hand, had a bounce-back day with Button and Hamilton securing second and third places, showing they weren't ready to be left in the dust just yet. Vettel, feeling the pressure, would roar back to life with his first victory of the season in Bahrain but he wasn't exactly doing a victory dance in his Red Bull. Something was amiss in his ride, and he made it known. And that is when that happened. The most surprising moment in Formula One history. The 2012 Spanish Grand Prix is when the stars aligned and the cosmos danced with God's light. Qualifying had given us a very interesting front row. Alonso started in second, but it wasn't Seb or Lewis or Nico or even Weber that started ahead of him. No, it was Pastor freaking Maldonado. From the moment the lights went out, we were set for a classic. As Fernando Alonso catapulted himself off the second spot on the grid and overtook him on the first corner, even with Maldonado trying to block Fernando, leading him onto the grass. For a good while, it was Alonso leading the pack from the front, but no matter how well Alonso drove, no matter how hard he raced, Maldonado seemed to be keeping up. Maldonado seemed to be just as fast. Maldonado seemed to be on Alonso's glorious bottom like a bad rash. And on lap 25, Williams would perform a move that put everyone on the edge of their seat. They triggered the undercut, executing a flawless pit stop. The Williams mechanic swiftly equipped Pastor with fresh tires, allowing him to re-enter the track in clean air and perform his best Sonic the Hedgehog impression. Eventually, Ferrari made the call to bring Alonso in for his own set of fresh rubber, but it was too late. Alonso exited the pits to Maldonado, blazing past him, with the Venezuelan setting the fastest lap of the race. This dogged, unrelenting drive from both Maldonado and everyone in the Williams garage meant that the man on the track now had a substantial seven-second gap that was created, with Maldonado successfully fending off Alonso's pursuit throughout the third stint. However, the race was far from over for the Venezuelan. As the tension mounted, a heart-in-mouth moment unfolded during Pastor's second and final pit stop. The rear right wheel was frustratingly slow to go on, costing precious time and allowing Alonso to close the gap after his own trip to the pit lane. And things would get even dicier yet, with a third man entering the fray. The Lotus Renault in front of him had no intentions of pitting anytime soon. His presence on the track slowed Pastor's pace, providing an opportunity for Alonso to catch up. If Maldonado wanted to make history, he would have to write it himself by overtaking it, and in the driving seat sat one of the fastest drivers on track, Kimi Raikkonen. But with Alonso closing in rapidly in just two laps after his pit stop, Pastor seized the moment. Assisted by DRS, he relentlessly closed the gap to Raikkonen, finally surging past him in a breathtaking maneuver during the braking zone of turn one. 
swiftly reclaiming his rightful place at the front of the pack. And then it happened. All of Catalonia rose to its feet as Maldonado crossed the finish line after 66 thrilling laps, clinching victory with a remarkable 3.1 second lead. He had done the unthinkable. This triumph ended William's eight-year drought without a Grand Prix win, a perfect celebration for team owner Frank Williams on his 70th birthday. Now let's take a look at the standings after that chaotic rollercoaster ride of a start. Sebastian Vettel and Fernando Alonso found themselves uncomfortably, awkwardly close to each other in a thrilling tie at the top with 61 points each. Hamilton, meanwhile, was close behind with 53 points, while Kimi Raikkonen and Romain Grosjean from Lotus were playing catch-up with 49 and 48 points, respectively. Then we went to Monaco. It is a circuit fit for royalty, and here the stage would be set for the return of the king, with Mark Webber claiming his second win in three years. However, it was Alonso who emerged as the sole possessor of the World Championship lead once the chequered flag fell. With impeccable tyre management and clever Ferrari strategy, he had run longer than Hamilton during pit stops, leaving his competitors in the dust. Vettel, after another failure to reach the top 10 shootout, pulled off a long first stint and managed to jump ahead of the McLaren to secure fourth place. When the chequered flag fell, the top quartet was separated by less than two seconds. Monaco had once again served up a classic straight from the kitchen of the F1 gods. Now let's dive into round seven in Canada. In a thrilling battle with Hamilton at the front, both Alonso and Vettel decided to take a gamble and go for just one pit stop, while McLaren played it safe. Hamilton effortlessly passed both cars on his fresh rubber, leaving them scratching their heads in disbelief. Eventually, Red Bull cut their losses and brought Vettel in for a second stop, but Ferrari paid the price for not doing the same when Vettel overtook Alonso for fourth place. Yeah, that was a proper comedy skit. Round eight took us to Valencia, where a pivotal moment unfolded in Alonso's championship challenge. Vettel, the man on the pole, seemed destined for victory. The German had raced into an early lead and was so far ahead of the rest of the pack that he had to contend with no traffic after pitting and rejoining the track. Yeah, that's how bonkers fast he was that day. His closest competition, Fernando Alonso, had started in 11th and jumped into 8th early. After passing Nico Hülkenberg for 7th, Alonso stayed out a lap longer than Kobayashi and Kimi while they made their pit stops, and then jumped them both when he came out on track. Things would really pick up when an incident on lap 27 between Jean-Eric Verne and Heikki Kovalainen brought out the safety car, erasing Seb's 20-second lead at the front. More importantly, it allowed Alonso and Kimi to jump Lewis after he had problems with his pit stop. By the end of the safety car period, Alonso had made it up to third place, within striking distance of Sebastian Vettel's charging Red Bull. By the time the cars had reached the first corner after going green, Alonso had passed Grosjean into second. Still, Alonso's Ferrari was simply not fast enough to keep the Red Bull behind it over the course of the lap. It was clear that Alonso would need a miracle to even challenge for the race win. Yeah, I don't know what faith Alonso believes in, but clearly it's the truth because the man got exactly what he needed. A miracle! Sebastian Vettel's Red Bull lost drive coming out on turn 10, eventually retiring from the race, allowing, you guessed it, Fernando Alonso to take the lead of the Valencia Grand Prix. After that, the man never looked back and raced off into the sunset, being followed by fan favourites Kimi Raikkonen and Michael Schumacher onto the podium. The home support went wild, cheering for their own. Valencia was red for the Tifosi. Valencia was red for Fernando Alonso. In round nine of the championship, our innocent grid found themselves at Silverstone, where the weather played a dismal role in the proceedings. It would be here that Alonso saw an opportunity to make up for Ferrari's qualifying deficit. He claimed the team's first pole since 2010 and came agonizingly close to back-to-back -back wins. With a reverse tyre strategy, he battled against the relentless pursuer Mark Webber, managing to stay ahead until the last three laps when the faster Red Bull overtook him. However, he still kept Vettel's RB8 at bay increasing his points lead over the reigning champion to a whopping 29. In Germany, the rain dance master Alonso once again worked his magic and secured pole position, but this time Vettel joined him on the front row, setting the stage for an absolute supernova of fire. Yeah, no. Jensen Button crashed the party. The man swooped in like a mischievous squirrel, snatching second place from Vettel during a pit stop. 
The top three drivers fought tooth and nail with Alonso, managing to stay just out of DRS range. Vettel, in a desperate attempt to regain his position, overtook Button on the final lap, but alas, it was deemed illegal by the race stewards. A time penalty pushed Vettel back to fifth place, meaning Alonso's lead over Seb only grew. But then we move on to round 11 in Hungary, the last race before the summer break. The battle for victory was an exclusive affair between Hamilton in the resurgent McLaren and the two Lotuses. Surprisingly, neither Vettel nor Alonso made it into the podium, leaving fans scratching their heads in disbelief. Ferrari's form seemed concerning, but Alonso managed to increase his overall points lead to a whopping 40 points. The standings at the halfway part of the season painted a pretty grim picture for the defending champion. First, Fernando Alonso, 164. Second, Mark Webber, 124. Third, Sebastian Vettel, 122. Fourth, Lewis Hamilton, 117. Fifth, Kimi Raikkonen, 116. The second half of the season would only get better, just like this video. So make sure you're subscribed to let me know that you're enjoying these uploads. Vettel's fight back began in earnest thanks to a first corner pileup triggered by Romain Grosjean. Alonso unfortunately would fall victim to the chaos, while Vettel charged forward to claim second place. It was a lucky break for Vettel, but he had to showcase his will-to-will -will instincts to secure a spot on the podium. Round 13 took us to the iconic Monza, where the Tifosi were ready to cheer their beloved Ferrari to victory. However, Formula One is rarely that simple. Both Alonso and Vettel faced their own troubles. Vettel's RB8 suffered another alternator failure, leaving him off the pace and out of contention for a podium finish. Meanwhile, Alonso's frustration reached new heights when a broken anti-rear roll bar in Q3 sent him spiraling down to 10th on the grid. Despite driving like a man possessed, Alonso could only salvage third place, leaving him with a sense of missed opportunity. Round 14 took us to the dazzling streets of Singapore, where the nightlights illuminated the thrilling battle for the championship. Hamilton, determined to outshine his rivals, led the pack with Vettel and Alonso hot on his heels. But wait, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Adrian Newey with another arsepool innovation that nobody can compete with. The mastermind behind the Red Bull would unleash a secret weapon in Singapore. A double DRS device and a new front wing. Suddenly, the RB8 was back in business, and Vettel pounced on the opportunity when Hamilton's gearbox decided to leave the chat. He isn't called the Lion of Singapore for no reason. Seb celebrated his second win of the season, while Alonso salvaged third place in a valiant effort. Now, while Alonso had done exceptionally well to keep his dusty Ferrari in the game, there was one thing going against him that even he found difficult to deal with. Sebastian Vettel's unerring consistency. Seb was picking up steam, and that was bad news for the rest of the grid. It would be in round 15 at Suzuka, Alonso would make a fatal mistake. Vettel, armed with his double DRS, started on pole, while Fernando found himself entangled in a non-consensual dance routine with Raikkonen at the first corner. The collision proved costly for Alonso, as Vettel, with a clear track ahead, never looked back. With back-to-back -back wins, Vettel had closed the gap, the title race had been blown wide open. In Korea, the tides of the championship began to shift. Alonso looked on in agony as he was greeted with the familiar sight of Vettel storming to victory, leaving his teammate Weber in the dust. Alonso put up for a valiant fight, but had to settle for third place. Again. Avert your eyes, Alonso fans. The driver's standings after the Korean GP looked like this. First, Sebastian Vettel, 215. Second, Fernando Alonso, 209. Third, Kimi Raikkonen, 167. Fourth, Lewis Hamilton, 153. Fifth, Mark Webber, 152. At round 17 in India, the qualifying pattern would remain largely unchanged. The Red Bull duo dominated the front row, with Alonso starting on the third row. However, race day proved to be a different story. Alonso, the crafty Spaniard that he is, managed to split the Red Bulls and secure a second place finish. But alas, Vettel's winning streak continued. Increasing his advantage over Alonso, the Spaniard was seeing his first title in a long, long time slip away inch by inch. Was there any way he could recover? Was there a twist in the tail left? 
Now, at this point, Vettel was leading Alonso by a mere 13 points as they headed into the final three races. Now, everyone in the paddock was convinced that Vettel had it in the bag. It seemed like Vettel was about to cruise to victory while poor Alonso struggled to keep the car in one piece. But, this truly was a season of but, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix wasn't quite going to be this straightforward. So, what happened? Well, Vettel once again showed his qualifying prowess by outperforming Alonso, standing himself in second place on the start grid. Meanwhile, Alonso found himself starting from sixth. No big deal, right? Well, it turns out that Red Bull made a little oopsie. They forgot to follow the post-qualifying rules, which required them to have a standard one litre in their car for inspection. Instead, they only had 800 millilitres. As a result, Vettel was hit with a penalty, forcing him to start from the pit lane instead of beside pole sitter Hamilton. Suddenly, the tables had turned, and Alonso found himself holding a golden ticket, a chance to close that 13-point gap and reclaim his spot at the top. Hamilton's McLaren decided to take an unplanned nap, suffering a power failure and retiring after just a third into the race. Talk about bad luck! But hey, this unexpected turn of events catapulted Raikkonen into the spotlight, giving him a glorious chance to win his first race in his comeback season. The stars were aligning for him. Alonso started the race well, climbing up to second place. But wait, there's more. Vettel, starting from the back of the grid like a true underdog, was on fire, charging his way through the ranks. Red Bull's strategy for Vettel was spot on, and it looked like he was on track to secure some precious points. However, his teammate Weber, who had been having a rough second half of the season, crashed out thanks to none other than Grosjean, the self-proclaimed first corner nutcase. But guess what? This crash brought out the safety car, leveling the playing field and giving Vettel a chance to catch up with the front runners. With fresh tyres and determination in his heart, Vettel put on a champion's display, crossing the finish line in third place, just behind Alonso. His lead was only cut by three points, bringing it down to a still respectable 10 points. But let's not forget about the true hero of the day. Kimi Raikkonen. The guy stole everyone's thunder with his brilliant victory. And he didn't just wow us on the track, he also gave us a hilarious moment during a team radio conversation. So I'll just let you experience it in its greatest form. Okay, Kimi, next guy behind you is Alonso. I'll keep you updated on the pace. Now we arrive at round 19, the United States Grand Prix at the Circuit of the Americas. With a 10-point lead, Vettel had a mathematical shot at sealing the crown. Qualifying went in Vettel's favour, securing pole position. While Alonso struggled to 8th place in a controversial move, Ferrari decided to break the seal on Felipe Massa's gearbox, promoting Alonso to 7th. This stunning strategy paid off as Alonso stormed through the pack, finishing in 3rd after Weber's unfortunate retirement. Meanwhile, Vettel would shockingly miss out on the win to a certain Lewis Hamilton. It seemed as if Seb had let Lewis pass rather than fight for the win and risk a DNF at that point of the season. So with this result, Alonso headed into the final race trailing by 13 points. The championship battle was far from over. There would yet to be further twists in Sao Paulo. As the cars lined up on the grid, you could feel the anticipation in the air. It was as if this world had reached its breaking point. When the five lights went out, little did we know that the first corner was going to set up a gut-wrenching finale. Vettel's race got off to a rocky start as he slipped back due to a poor start. And if that wasn't enough, Bruno Senna, the nephew of the legendary Etten Senna, collided with Vettel, sending him into a spin. The damage inflicted was so severe that his team deemed it unrepairable. As if fate wasn't cruel enough, Vettel also faced speed issues on the straights and lost communication with his pit wall. Dude! The radio's not working. What are you telling us? We can't hear a thing. It was a nightmare unfolding before his eyes. The Spaniard would fight his way up from seventh on the grid, setting himself up for a potential championship victory. He was close. He was going to do it. But amidst the rain, safety cars and strategic pit stops, Vettel showcased his resilience. He rose up. Kind of like Batman, actually. Against all odds, he had fought his way back through the field, finishing in a remarkable sixth place. It was a performance that left everyone in awe. Alonso, with the help of his teammate Massa, who had a stunning resurgence in the second half of the season, secured a well-deserved second place. Their teamwork was nothing short of brilliant. However, in the end, it proved to be too little, too late for Alonso. 
It was deja vu for Alonso, experiencing the bitter taste of defeat to Vettel for the second time in just three years in the Drivers' World Championship. With a mere three points separating them, Vettel emerged as the three-time world champion, making history as the youngest to achieve this feat. And that's a wrap, folks. That's how the curtain fell on this heart-pounding season of Formula One. If you want to see more content like this, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Why don't you check out some of the other videos on my channel? Seriously, they're good, if I don't say so myself.